Who knew I was sitting on a gold mine? Something that I would truly love and enjoy. Something brought to you by Marvel. And sadly, I, I missed issue one. And in my search to find issue one, which I couldn't, they sold out. People were saying that was the best issue. I also missed issue six. Whatever. I've been sitting on them. Finally, I decided to read those today. Get off of that. I'll fix that in a little bit. I bought my dog some big treats. It's too big. I'm going to cut them down like four out of this one and make a whole bunch of treats. Don't be drooling just yet. That's not for you now. I just had to come straight home and I'm jumping on this. Anyone comic book reading, Dog Life Chris, Marvel Comics. Mark Wars, The History of Marvel Universe by Javier Rodriguez and Alvaro Lopez. Do it for the Spanglish fools. Uh, supposedly the world's gonna end. That's, a, that's the beginning. This is kind of a lengthy, it's kind of a lengthy one. We're gonna just jump right into it. Mutants born with the X gene that gives them superhuman powers began to appear with increasing frequency. Two mutants, an Australian pro-cognitive named Irene Adler and the shape-shifting Raven Darkholm embarked upon a quest for wealth and influence under the names Destiny and Mystique, the shapeshifter. In London, a mysterious band of human soldiers with strange high-tech weapons came together to repel a Martian invasion. One survivor, Eben Stafford, dedicated his life to defending the Earth. Referring to himself as the man on the wall, Stafford would pass the role to others in the years to come. This is a history rundown, by the way, just so you know it. This is all it's gonna be. Elsewhere, another legacy was continued when an English couple the Randalls inadvertently discovered the ancient mystic city of K'un Lan during one of its periodic appearances in the earthly plane. Their son, Orson Randall, adopted the ways of the K'un Lan and defeated the dragon Shao, Shao Lao and absorbed some of his powers, becoming the true and first Iron Fist of the modern age. I love his outfit, yo. It's very shaggy. Other heroes rose under the threat of the First World War. Union Jack, James Montgomery, and James Montgomery Falsworth battled the Germans alongside the Crimson Cavalier, Sir Stealth, and the Silver Squire, and the Phantom Eagle, Freedom's Five. Iron Fist would later join their ranks. Behind enemy lines, American's first super soldier, John Steele, was captured and placed in a stasis so that the German scientists, among them the conscripted Jewish doctor Abraham Erskine, 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 might study his incredible physical powers. Prowless. Prowess, prowess, not powers, prowess. A chance meeting between the sea captains, Leonard Mackenzie and the Princess Fenn of the Atlantis led to a romantic marriage and the birth of the human hybrid Atlantean child named Namar. Namar. Who is Namar? Just wait, we'll see. On the Lower East Side of New York, a sickly child named Steve Rogers, was born on Independence Day, a date foreshadowing the journey upon which his innate courage and hatred of bullies would later take him. Vampire Deacon Frost feasted on the pregnant woman, infusing her child with the enzyme that transformed Eric Brooks into the half-man, half-vampire Blade. I like how they added Deacon Frost and Blade in there. That's pretty nice. Inspired by the work of the Nathaniel Exus geneticist Hubert Windham established a lab 
in Transia on Wangador, Wanda, Wandagore Mountain. A self-described visionary, Wyndham crowned himself the High Evolutionary, creating a new civilization by transforming animals into humans, a form he called New Men. Adventurer and vigilantes continued to join the forces. Iron Fist led the short-lived Confederates of the Curious against the supernatural threats, while the East Coast-based Mystery Man battled conspiracy and mystic evil. That's crazy how they added the mystery men in there. Where's the shoveler? Whatever. Is that the same mystery men with the shoveler and the sphincter? Probably not. In California, a thrill seeker called himself Dominic Fortune took aim against those who would imperil America. In New York, Dr. Tom Halloways was inspired by the two guy the two gun kid now an elderly patient under his care, to take up the cause of the heroism as the angel. Everywhere, an undercurrent of heroism was smoldering soon. It would burst into a red-hot flame. Soon it would burst. In, 19, in 1939, scientist Phineas Horton created the first artificial man. Unsuccessfully, he believed as it turned to blaze whenever it was exposed to oxy oh, oxygen. Eventually, Horton's android learned to control the fire generated by his android body and became known as the Heroic Human Torch. In Tibet, searching for an heir to his title, the Ancient One counseled two pupils, one Baron Karl Mordor, Mordo, was unable to shed the darkness in his heart and would in time become one of Earth's most sinister sorcerers. The other, Anthony Ludgate, went on to use his evil magic to combat evil as Dr. Druid. I don't know both of those guys at all. We know the Human Torch, though. In temperamental, the temperamental Prince Namor taught by his elders to distrust the surface dwellers and prepared to invade other cities, attempted a renaissance mission in New York City, only to run aloof of paranoid and fear from those who would refer to him as the freakish submariner. No more, submariner. Enraged, he attacked the city and was rebuffed by the human torch the first meeting of the new breed of champions known as superheroes. Over time, the Torch was able to form a tenacious friendship with Namor and convince him to spare the surface world of his wrath and their pact would not last very long. Not long after, however, the Torch found a true companion in the orphan, Tom Raymond, a child of two of Professor Horton's assistants through a combination of, stop it, of mutated genetics and exposure to Horton's experiments. The boy, nicknamed Toro, could emulate the torch's abilities. I've heard of that guy. I just don't remember. Hey, don't give me that lip. After this, I'm gonna cut up your thing. Just chill. On September 1st, 1939, the German army invaded Poland, sparking World War III among his underlying Underlings, Fuhrer Adolf Hitler relied particularly heavy, heavily on the merciless Johann Schmidt, whom Hitler himself had trained in the worst ways of the Nazis. Under the grotesque identity of the Red Skull, Schmidt began to reign over the terror, reign, began a reign of terror on all of Europe. Though not yet officially engaged in the war, the American military nonetheless sought to create a symbol of national strength. Dr. Erskine of Germany, who had defected to the U.S., spearheaded the Operation Rebirth, turning the fragile volunteer Steve Rogers into a superhuman fighting machine. He was assigned the codename Captain America. Rogers protected the home front alongside the orphan James Buchanan Bucky Barnes. Rogers 
battled the Nazi fifth columnist valiantly, but he yearned to take the fight to the front lines. In December 1941, that's two years later, he got his chance. The attack on Pearl Harbor spurred President FDR to declare Americans an official member of the Allied forces, and the country was at war. Dang it, I can't read. It's one thing about uh, Marvel Comics, their font is so tiny. Is that just me? Am I just a hater? At the request, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Others, such as The Wizard, Miss America, Spitfire, and the son of the original Union Jack, gradually joined their ranks. Meanwhile, the home front was defended by an explosion of new patriotic, motivated crime fighters. Among them was Arcus Division, The Thin Man, Red Raven, Blue Diamond, and Jack Frost. I guess you, as you can see here, those guys. Spitfire, though, I know her. Uh oh. One, two, three. Elsewhere overseas, Sergeant Nick Fury and his illegal. Why did I say illegal? Elite band of soldiers, the Howling Commandos, become legends as they were struck fear, as they struck fear into the hearts of the axis of power. Moving up and down the Western Front, the Commandos liberated towns and concentration camps alike. Tragically, they never in encountered the camp that held the young mutant. There's like dog hair in my nose. Ew. The young mutant, Max Eisenhart. Who's that? Three, two, one. Who is that? He had freed the boy. Oh, had they freed the boy, allowing him to channel his magnetic powers under their guidance, all of history might have taken a different turn. Hmm. I wonder who Max Eisenhart. It gives everyone's first name their original human name and that's something that I, I just found it very interesting and that's probably the reason why I read this today because I didn't know Blade's real name until I just said it a while ago uh where are we where are we where are we Erskin Erskine killed by Nazis took the secrets to his of this super soldier serum to the grave both America and the access of evil attempted to recreate it, but only partially successful, with some subjects, including the African-American Isaiah Bradley and the Nazi Master Man. The African-American. Why'd they put that? <laughs> In the late April, 1945, near the end of the... I should take a shower before I did this. I had 10 dog walks today, so forgive, forgive my blowing of dog hair. Near the end of the World War II, Captain America and Bucky Barnes prevented officer, Nazi officer Baron Heinrich Zemo from successfully using an explosive drone against the Allies, triggered by Bucky before the plane could reach Allied shores the bomb exploded, hurling both of them into the icy waters of the northern Atlantic. The Soviet recovered Bucky, who was badly wounded, and he was missing memories. Steve Rogers, mm -hmm. preserved in suspended animation by the super soldier serum, would remain lost for decades to come. Poor Bucky, he lost his arm. He was just a young boy. Ah, the tale of Bucky is just so sad, Bucky Barnes. Both Captain America and the Red Skull were believed dead, and they would have successors. First, the Spirit of 76, and later, the Patriot, as the Rogers legacy continued. While Soviets' operative Albert Malik donned the Skull of the Mask. The Mask of the Skull. Do you stop whining? Ew. Both Cap- Oh, I said that already. And though the Human Torch was able to bring an end to the tyranny of Adolf Hitler, Germans Baron Strucker combined the Nazis' more inhumane philosophies 
with his own in creating his secret organization known only as Hydra. Hail Hydra! At the close of the war, the invaders transitioned into peacetime, all the all winter squad. She got that Nazi sign and she's whooping some tail, bro. It's like 5v1 thing, cuz. While the destroyer, Union Jack, and Spitfire banded together to hunt down the surviving Nazis and the other war criminals, eventually the group would be joined would be joined by others and would become the V Battalion. Bucky, the Winter Soldier. The war had ended, but hostilities had not. American engaged in communist Russia in the Cold War fought not with open conflict, but with espionage. That's when you have spies go in and take out information that's vital to the downfall of that specific country. Not very fair, but espionage. The Soviets turned a brainwashed Bucky Barnes into one of the most effective and least seen operatives, the Winter Soldier. Stateside, groomed by a colony of Eternals, Bob Grayson used a uranium... Uranus, Uranian weapons to battle the communists as Marvel Boy. And the Marine, Adam Brashear, did the same as the Blue Marvel. New heroes were needed as the old ones continued to disappear. William Burnside and Jack Monroe claimed the roles of Captain America and Bucky after taking a flawed version of the original Super Serum. Though they became a symbol of patriotism after the Korean War, the serum slowly turned them into, turned them mentally unstable and destructive. And with no cure at hand, the government placed them in cryogenic deep freeze. No, the Human Torch, victim of the lingering radiation of the atomic bomb, burned himself out beneath the Nevada desert. Does that mean he killed himself? Do you commit suicide? The Submariner's memories were erased by the villainous Paul Destine, who left Nemour wandering New York City as a homeless beggar. He doesn't even go back to the water? <laughs> Nick Fury remained, advi remained vital thanks to the unique infinity formula that slowed his aging substantially. As a CIA agent, Nick Fury fought for his country as the next to become the man on the wall to fight for his planet. At the height of the Cold War, the FBI agent Jimmy Woo assembled a Department Zero of heroes, Gorilla Man, Venus, Marvel Boy, Namora, and the Human Robot to battle the most recent head of the, of the Atlas Empire, the Golden Claw. This is a lot of characters, bruh. Other teams rose to fight the menace, menaces, both domestic and otherworldly. Ulysses, Bloodstone, Dr. Druid, oh. Makari, Namora, and Zwadi, Zwadi, called themselves the Monster Hunters. Go on, go, go on, go cry over there in your bed. The high evolutionaries who forced repelled a mystic invasion by Chathan, but not before the Elder God was able to mark an infant girl named Wanda Maximoff as his future vessel. I didn't know that. The Yankee Clipper, Black Fox, Liberty Girl, and Nightingales were the first line defending Earth from the scrolls and other threats. Now this one was a ticker right here. Nick Fury brought together Craven the Hunter, Sabretooth, Silver Sable, Dominic Fortune, and others under the directive of the Avengers Initiative. One of the first Avengers was Sabretooth? Who would have thought? That was before the Avengers were Avengers. Sudden waves of extraterrestrial and, and extra dimensional threats created panic. 
Notable among them was the towering representative of, of the extraterrestrial race Flora Colossi, who came to Earth aggressively collect, collecting information about its inhabitants, calling itself Groot. Its ability to control plants nearby would destroy a town before it was stopped. Dr. Stephen Strange, the most prized of all the Ancient One students, set up a residence at 17... at 177 Bleecker Street in the New York's Greenwich Village. At first, dealing with the minor magical menaces, he would soon be introduced to mysterious mis to mysteries of the cosmos previously unseen by mortal humans. Andre Thornton, better known as the Professor, used Mr. Sinister's abandoned work to attempt to create a super-powered warrior of his own, Weapon Plus, yielded a group of black ops soldiers calling them Team X. Preeminent among this was the bone-clawed mutant with healing abilities Canadian named James Howlett. James Howlett, also known as Logan or the Wolverine. Logan, Silver Fox, Maverick, and others worked in secret before in secret both for the Weapons Plus program and for the CIA. James Howlett, Wolverine. What? Okay. Leaving the government leaving the government service after accidentally shooting a fellow agent, Logan was captured by an offshoot group, Weapon X, in an attempt to remake his remake him as a living weapon. They infused his skeleton with an infused his skeleton including his claws, with an indestructible metal known as Adam Mantium. Okay, it's Adam Mantium. Adam Mantium. For those of you who thought it was Anamantium, like I thought it was my whole life. It's Adam. Reduced to nearly a mindless state, Logan broke free of his reprogramming, destroyed his tormentors, and wandered into the Canadian Rockies. He would soon be recruited by the Canadian Superhumans Department H. Jeez, this is a good one. The second Red Skull engineered the fatal plane crash of two CIA operatives, Richard and Mary Parker. Shortly after, their child was born. The child adopted by Richard's brother-in-law and sister-in-law would grow up to become one of Earth's most valiant champions of justice. Is that Nick Fury? A United Nations affiliate group spurred the next incarnation of the Brotherhood of the Shield as a countermeasures against the rising evil of Hydra. Nick Fury was appointed the head of the Supreme Headquarters and International Espionage Law Enforcement Division, or SHIELD. Wait, SHIELD stands for Supreme Headquarters International Espionage Law Enforcement Division? Wow. Who would have known? I didn't know that, what it stands for. Now you know. In Los Angeles, the Giborim required mortal acolytes to serve them on Earth, promising them wealth, power, and influence to their potential servants if they could prove their worthiness. Vowing to pass this reward to their children, a group known as the Pride demonstrated their values by becoming the covert rulers of the city, the city's criminal empire. Sheesh. When the Asian nation of Sai Kong resisted communist takeover, the conflict turned international. Nations both from the West and the East entered into a decade-long Sai Kong War, in time struggling to... in time struggling to... lay first claim to the Sai Kong's primary asset, a mysterious energy known only as the Dragon's Breath, around which cults and legends had grown. Asian crime boss Baron the Mandarin and Lady Lotus manipulated much of the conflict, as did the warlord Wang Chu. Never heard of those guys. It was in Sai Kong that the Marines James Rhodes, James Rhodes, is that, 
the war machine and frank castle the punisher army air for air force pilot ben grimm ben grimm is that the thing and military consultant richard reed and then that's mr fantastic i don't know i'm just thinking i don't know these things i'm just like throwing names out and many others would later become key fighters in history, first fought in the service of their country. Odin, exasperated by Thor's or arrogance, exiled him to Earth in the mortal guise of a disabled youth, a disabled young medical student named Donald Blake. The memory of his true identity stripped from him as Blake, Thor, learned the values of human humility and empathy as a healer and a surgeon donald blake shut up bro that's not your name no one's gonna say that name ever at state university in new york three students richard grimm not to be confused with ben grimm okay and reed's arrogant counterpart victor von doom would meet the first time unaware of how fate would soon entwine their lives the stage was set for the age of heroes to come. To be continued. Actually, I have three and four. I haven't read them, but man. Whew. Anyone comic book reading? Dog Life Chris. We out this sucker. Get some knowledge, boys. Go to the comic book store.